Okay, I think uh, yesterday we abruptly stopped with the things you may not. Am I correct? Yes. Did I miss something? You may not. <laughs> Don't I know about it? The you may nots. You may not do any major alterations or repairs to propellers. If I had to do something to a propeller and I, and, and I asked myself, I said, self, uh, is this a major alteration repair I'm about to perform? Who would I ask? Where would I go? FAR. FAR is correct. FAR what? AMT. Matt. <laughs> FAR part? 43. 43. <laughs> Appendix A has a list of all the major alterations and repairs. So if you wanted to paint a propeller and you looked in there and it doesn't say anything about painting a propeller, does that mean uh, painting the propeller is allowed? Yeah. yeah. It kind of is. Okay. Uh, any repair to instruments, and the word any should be, and if you have any questions about that, you can see me later. We can go over any. Um, all right, and this is a big one. Um, any, oh, so we'll do any, any task for which you do not have experience, which you do not have experience, uh, unless, there is an unless, what do you suppose the unless might be? Well, now that's, we're, yes, of course, you are correct with that. But this is assuming that you're not being supervised. So in other words, and I've, like I said, I've never, I've never overhauled a turbine engine. And if I wanted to do it and I could find somebody with experience, then I would say, hey, next time you overhaul an engine, can, a turbine engine, can I be with you and get some experience and help you? And they said, yes, that's, of course, legal. That's how we get experience. But I say, well, I don't want to do that. I just want to do it. Now, I've got a book. I've watched YouTube. I can overhaul jet engine. Unless I could walk into the FAA, the local FISDO office, and if they give me permission to do it, I could convince them, then I could do it. I don't think anybody has ever taken them up on that. Hmm. So, so. Unless the administration say so? Yeah, unless you demonstrate to the administrator can. Unless you can demonstrate to the administrator. <laughs> You can. You can. Now, of course, I suppose that I think about, well, why would they have that in there? Well, there's always got to be a first person to do something somewhere, right? So I guess maybe that person goes to the administrator and says, look, I'm going to be the first person to do this. So um, how about it? And also, do you, you may not perform any task, task for which you do not have, which you do do not have current and correct manual. Which you do not have also the, the current and correct manual. Now we talked a little bit about what current can mean. That's a little beyond the scope of this class. We'll just say current and correct manual. So if you don't have the right manual and you're doing it, uh, you're asking for it. Uh, let me see. We can throw in the, let me see. You know, we'll do this one. IV. You may not. A couple more nots. Um, return to service. Return to service. Any major alteration repair. Can you perform a major alteration or repair on an aircraft? Yes. Can you perform a major alteration or repair on, a, on an engine? Yes. How about on a propeller? No. There you go. Okay, you can't. But on an aircraft, an engine, an appliance, uh, you can perform the major alteration or repair, but you cannot, what? What do I got here? Sign off. Can't sign it off. You can't return it to service. Who can return it to service? An inspect somebody with an inspection authorization. Now, of course, there's repair stations. It's a whole other rule. No. Um, you cannot, you may not perform an annual inspection. Okay, who can perform an annual inspection? Care to guess? Inspection. Somebody with an inspection authorization. 
That is something we cannot delegate to an A and P. We have to do it ourselves. Um, all right. What is a major repair? Um, what, is it? what is a major repair or alteration? I mean, we just talked about that. What is a major repair or alteration? It is anything listed. Listed where? If you are 43, Appendix A. Uh, what do you think a major overhaul on an engine is? I got to do a major overhaul on an engine. Is that a major repair? Or alteration? Or is a minor? It could be the opposite, repair or alteration. Minor? Major repair? I'll say minor. You're not changing anything in the, that book that you said. The, okay, the type certificate data sheet. Very good. So that means it's not an alteration. Okay. So a major repair is considered a, a major, major overhaul is considered a minor repair. Unless it has other than a spur type gear, uh, reduction gear. So if you have an engine, and most smaller engines don't have any sort of reduction gear. You've seen the crankshaft, you're working on them. Crankshaft and the edge is that flange. That flange bolts right to the propeller, not a transmission or anything else. That's where the prop goes, boom, right there. So you can see it's one to one, right? There's no reduction gear. But some aircraft where that flange is, they'll put a gear and they'll reduce it. One gear goes to one gear and out, that's the spur type gear. That is not a major uh, repair. But other ones, like uh, when you walk in the lab, we have the washing machine to the right. If you look to the left, that very large engine sitting up with the prop. <coughs> okay, that engine belongs this way. It's just sitting on a stand. That has uh, planetary and sun gear inside. To disassemble that is a major repair. So that's not on the test. Don't worry about it. So, uh, so A&P cannot do a major repair? You can do a major repair, but you can't return it to service. Okay, so I'm looking at uh, 4-1 here. Return to service and major, you may not. You may not return to service. Okay. Okay. And so major alterations are repaired. So let's run through this again. So we have, we have a major alteration that needs to be done. And what's a major alteration I talked about? Changing the air filter. You're going to put this, okay. So I want to change the air filter from the old paper style to the foam style. It's a major alteration because it wasn't the way the plane was built. So you're an A&P and I'm an IA, okay? We'll play that. Got it? So can you change out that air filter? Yes. Okay, you can. You just did a major alteration, right? right. It's not a problem. Can you sign the logbook and say it's returned to service? No. Nope. Who do you got to call? Inspector. Got to call me, inspection <laughs> authorization. I'm going to come over and say, you did this? And you say, I did that. I'm going to look at it and go... You did a nice job. I signed it off. I signed the paperwork, and here you go. Okay. I think when it was throwing them off, is that four one has an and? Yeah. So it says you oh. cannot return to service, to and you cannot major alteration any. or repair. You may not return to service. Any. Any. Return to service. Any. Oh. any. Sorry. That's what he was asking. Yeah. Because it was saying and. Any. Okay. Any major alteration. Sorry. Now oh, I got it. Thank you. All right. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, let's talk about inspection authorization real quick. <coughs> an inspection authorization is just an add-on to your license. And now you, you should know this. Um, how long do you have to be an A&P before you can have one? Three years. And then the, during those last three years, how many years must you have been in the field? Two. Two. So you can sit at home for one year. Watch Jerry Springer, then you got to go to work, all right? Is that guy still on TV? It's yeah. a whole court yeah. show now. Have you guys everyone. seen that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have cable. I just saw a thing about it. This is it has a courtroom. AMP. It's crazy. AMP that has the authority that has the authority. Authority. I have to go up a little bit. There you go. Has the authority to. What kind of authority do I have? Perform annual inspections uh, 
I will mention this right here is there's, there's a thing called a 100 hour inspection. And if you were to go to FAR 43 Appendix D, it says right on top, scope and detail of 100 hour or annual inspections. An annual inspection and 100 hour are the exact same inspections. Exact same. So can you do a 100 hour? You can. Can you do an annual? No. I'm an IA. Can I do a 100 hour? Of course. Can I do an annual? Yes. As that sounds confusing. It's like, well, wait a minute. Why? OK. So an annual inspection has to be done, guess how often? Every year. So every year, that airplane has to come down, and an IA has to put eyes on it. So not every aircraft has to have 100 hours. Uh, it's only if they're flying for hire. So if they're flying for hire, they have to have an annual, I'm sorry, 100 hour every 100 hours. So every 100 hours, it could come. So what if a plane flew 400 hours that year? So I do an annual, it flies 100 hours, you look at it. Flies another 100 hours, you look at it. Flies another 100 hours, you look at it. Comes around to the end of the year, and it's like, hey, guess what? It's been a year and 100 hours due. Who are they going to ask to look at it this time? Ask me to look at it. So I'm going to do a 100 hour slash annual. The next 100 hour, you do it. So I, uh, an IA is getting eyes on it once every year. So, yeah. Um, so a hundred, or sorry, an annual can be in place of a hundred hour. A hundred hour can be in place of an annual, right? An annual can be in place of a hundred hour. Yes. I could annual, I have an airplane. I could annual it every day I wanted to. Every day. I can annual it 365 days a year. Take it up if I, if I wanted to. There's no limit to how many times I can annual it. I wouldn't want to. As it stands now, we do it every three or four years. That's not true at all. All right. Uh, let me see. Where, where am I here? Um, they don't all have to have annuals? You said only if No, don't all have to have 100 hours. Like my plane, I don't fly it for hire. It's just my own personal plane. I could fly it 1,000 hours a year. It's up to me. I don't have to do 100 hour. But you have to do an annual. I have to do an annual. Everybody has to do an annual. Everybody has to do an annual. Okay. There, of course. Is that yeah. like smog? Um, for cars? No, it's not. It's uh, I want to be careful about everybody because there's there's a lot more rules out there. It can be really complicated because you can do it, um, you can put it on um, phase checks, you can do it on progressive annuals, you can, there's all these other things out there, right? So especially when you get in a larger aircraft, uh, that's going to change dramatically. So don't think, you know, it's like you're flying around and you're, you know, Boeing 737-800 and the pilot's like, well, folks, we're uh, going to drop her off for the annual, you know, it, this <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Uh, they go for phase checks. So, all okay, right, and return to service. IA can return to service. Return to service. Major alterations and repairs. Well, of course, it's assuming I have proper data <coughs> and such and such, but that's beyond that. And we said you must have it for three years. I think we already said that. Must. B and A and P for three years. And I do want to mention repair stations because it's it's important that you know this. And I've talked quite a bit about it. Um, who are they? Where where is the repair station certified under? Part 145. Listen to you guys. I mean, you impressed with yourselves? You should be a little bit. Three days ago, if I said, well, that's repair station under 145, you're like, what did you just say? Now I'm asking you and you're telling me. So let's do it. All right. So in general, I'll just do it. In general, a repair station can do anything that is approved to do. A repair station. can do anything. By anything, I mean anything. If you're reading a manual, it says, under no circumstances should you ever do this. And a repair station can get approval from somebody to do it. Guess what? They can do it, even if it's contradictory to a manual. It doesn't happen, but it's just if they could figure out a way to do it. More often than not, it's if a manual is silent on something, then you can get a approval to do it. Um, like, for example, the crankshafts you're working on, you have the minimum uh, new and, ma and max new, and then it goes to serviceable. Well, what do you do with the crankshaft when it hits serviceable? Throw it away? 
I mean, that, that little crankshaft's, like I said, one of the cheapest ones out there, somewhere between three to $5,000. So you get all the way into serviceable, now you send it to a company who has got, uh, uh, who will grind it 10 thousandths undersized, you put bigger bearings. And you run it a whole more. What happens when you get down to that? Well, according to the manufacturer, you throw it away. But somebody said, hey, wait a minute. If we could go zero to 10, how about we do it one more time and go 20 thousandths under, and we'll add even bigger bearings and fill up that space. And that's exactly what somebody has approval to do um, under repair stations. So you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's see. You can do anything, anything that is that it is approved, that it is approved to do. And um, proof to do in their manual. Because as a repair station, you're going to have a manual. And it's going to tell you everything you can do. It tells you about hiring personnel, how you do drug tests, how you're going to, it gets into great nuance. How you're going to calibrate, what you're going to calibrate, how often. Um, but So you can do anything that it's approved to do, but it's kind of a double-edged sword, but nothing, let's see, but, but nothing that isn't in the manual. I hope that made sense. <coughs> So in other words, if it's not in your manual, you can't do it. So there are times where there actually be a repair station, this gigantic repair station, and they'll want to do some simple thing like, hey, they want to do a, a 25-hour inspection on a little Cessna, and they'll be like, this is not in our manual. We, we don't do this kind of a thing. And they'll be looking for an a &P. Is there any A&Ps in the house that can have to do this? So it actually works that way. It's kind of weird. Um, let me see. And we talked about, uh, if you want to have an instrument worked on, who do you have to send it to? Got to be a repair station. You want to have a propeller worked on pretty much, who you got to send it to? The repair station. Yep. Can a repair station have an A&P that can do things the repair station doesn't, like, come under their employ? You can, but it's rarely done okay. because of liability reasons. Hmm. And so if you think about it, uh, you're my boss and you have a repair station. Let's say you're a, repair, you're a propeller repair station. So we got all this. We can do anything you want to on props, right? And somebody comes in with their, their airplane and says, hey, since you got, you know, you're putting the prop on and stuff, I really appreciate it. Could you just do a quick oil change? That's not part of your repair station manual. So you come to me, Kevin, can you do oil change? How do you want me to sign it off? Want me to use my AMP number? I don't have liability insurance, so it's like, so you just gotta be careful. Now, you could, and it happens. Yeah. Uh, and there's also something called repairman. Hey, if you're a repairman, raise your hand. There you go. Well, what do you <laughs> got two of them. What do you define as a repairman? Not what I define the FAA. Okay, so repairman. How do you want to define it? Uh, your name is? Byron. 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 So we can talk about Byron back there, who is a certified repairman. So he works for Gulfstream, and he is an, a repairman for instruments, right? Instruments and avionics. And avionics. So as, uh, as a repair station, I own a repair station, and, and we'll say I'm the boss. So I hire Byron. I give him a repairman certificate, which is like uh, a specialized A&P to work on that equipment. Now, the funny thing is, I give him a repairman certificate, and he says, thank you, Kevin. I'm gonna quit, and I'm gonna go work for Cessna Citation. Guess what happens to his repairman certificate? <laughs> Throw it away, throw in the trash. But he'll get, to, he'll get to the next repair station, and they'll say, oh man, we've got, we've got Byron, because this guy's great, and we get, they'll issue him one. So it stays, but it's just kind of a way of acknowledging your skill level. So your repairman certification would be, or certificate would stay with mm -hmm. the station, and you can't take it with you. That's correct. That's why you can always put on like a, like a reference, like I, I did have this yep. I just don't currently have it. And that's why you gotta have OJT, and that's the difference. I kept OJT for 20 some years, so it, it carries with me, but it's a pain. Okay, so it's dependent upon location if you're dealing with uh, part 145 stuff. Um, it can be issued for a specific task, can be issued for a specific task, like maybe you just do NDT work or something, maybe you just do wheels and brakes. 
Um, let's see. But this one it gets right way outside of that line. So uh, can be issued to the builder of a home build. So if you actually built your own aircraft, FAA is going to issue you a repairman certificate on that specific aircraft. So you are the authority on that aircraft. You don't come to an IA. You don't need to. You don't do an annual inspection. You do what's called a condition inspection. You do it yourself. The FAA kind of figures at that point when you built it. I mean, who better to take care of it? So, and now it can also be used, reissued, reissued for light sport aircraft. And as an AMP, I don't worry too much about this because an AMP exceeds it. So you can. You're kind of above that. Uh, don't forget pilots. Pilots can perform preventative. Preventative what? Maintenance. Maintenance. On what? Yeah. Own aircraft. That does not apply, does not apply to part 121 aircraft. That's domestic air carriers, uh, 129, that's foreign carriers, or 135, that's like commuter airlines and stuff like that. So it really only applies to part 91, which is just your general aviation, not really for hire kind of stuff. So you're not going to see some guy who owns his own 737 flying around Jack's Air Service, getting out, doing his preventative maintenance. <laughs> All right, let's cover some important terms that you need to know. And I know you've heard these words because it was in your project one, but I don't think you understood the words that you were writing down. So I have the term overhaul. The word overhaul has gotten a lot of people into a lot of trouble because the FAA defines this word and they define it in part 43.2 alpha and it has a very specific meaning. Now if, I, if I'm in the automotive world and I say, hey, I overhauled my car, what does that mean? It means whatever I want it to mean, right? It means I took. It means I put some gunk spray on the engine, took it to the car wash, sprayed it off, <laughs> put a coat of paint on it, and the overhaul, right? If I want it to, to me, the FA says no, not us. You say the word overhaul, and you write overhaul in the logbook. It means that you did the following. It means you disassembled, cleaned, inspected. Inspected, repaired, reassembled. And I will tell you that most, nobody gets in trouble for these. They're all fine. They get, they, they're good at disassemble, cleaning, inspecting, repair, and reassembling. Where it all falls apart is the last one and tested. So you say, wow, I overhauled my coffee cup. I disassembled, I cleaned it, I inspected it, I did non-destructive testing on it, I found no cracks, I painted it this nice matte black finish. But how do you test a coffee cup? Chosen coffee. Chosen coffee, okay, then, as long as I tested it. Um, but you have to be careful. So, well, okay, let's take a crankshaft. Uh, you know, I had the machine shop. People bring me, I need you to overhaul the crankshaft. I can't really overhaul. I know what they mean, so I didn't argue with them. So, okay, so I take the crankshaft, I disassemble. There's actually things you can take apart on the crankshaft. Disassemble, I clean, inspect, I would repair it, I would reassemble it. Yeah, there's things I could put back together. There's a plug in the front, they have counterweights on them sometimes. I do all that, I'd reassemble it, and did I test it? No. 
yeah, how the heck am I going to test a crankshaft? There's no test procedure, you know. So I can't call it an overhaul. Um, so sometimes I return it to, you know, it's returned to service. It's, it's done everything. I give back to people. I'm like, well, it doesn't say overhaul. Well, I know that. And then I have to explain to them I can't write overhaul because I didn't test it. You know, just like when I, so I'd, I would overhaul cylinders. I would, now you can see some of those more moving parts. I'd disassemble, clean, spec, repair, reassemble. But I did write overhaul. And I remember AFA going, hey, you wrote overhaul. How the heck did you test it? The book tells me how to test it. It says take it, put it on the side, put the valves in, put kerosene in the, uh, the ports, and see if it leaks through the valves. If it doesn't leak, it's good. That's tested. Oh, yeah, good point. So, all right, so you must test it. And that's overhaul. All right, everybody, I think, figured that out. Um, then I said, what is the term rebuilt? Okay, rebuilt. I'm running out of room. Same as overhaul. But, anybody know the answer? Yep, but um, I want to use tested, um, but to new tolerances. So somebody brings me an engine. All right, well, let's go back up here. Then what does this mean? What is all this tested to? What standard is that done? If this is new, there is no such thing as new, used. Service of all. Serviceable standards, C -A -B -L. serviceable standards. So those of you that have got to the crankshaft or cylinders, you can see there's new specs and then serviceable. So somebody brings me an engine and says, I want you to overhaul it. I can do it all to serviceable limits. Now I'll tell you this, that all of my engines were actually to new tolerances, but I never used that word rebuilt. And why? Because the Almost everybody in the aviation industry, pilots, owners, they don't understand the difference between the two, and rebuilt is not in their vernacular. They just don't, it doesn't mean anything to them. They want an overhaul. So if I say, well, I rebuilt it, they're like, oh, man, I paid for an overhaul here. You know, it's like, what do you mean rebuilt? Are you trying to get one by me? I'm like, well, rebuilt. So, um, so I use the word overhaul, and I use it for two reasons. One, most people didn't know the difference and didn't care. Two, what if there is one small single spec tolerance in there somewhere that just happened to be just squeaked out of new just a little tiny bit? Did I overhaul it or rebuild it? No, it was an overhaul now. Every, and you guys will understand this next, uh, next class when after about a week of measuring stuff, four people, you're like, okay, really? I'm tired of doing this. And you'll see how many, and I only have you do a couple measurements in there. And trying to do the whole engine, it, you do everything, but it's it's very difficult to get 100% to new, and you don't want to, you know, for a very tiny, tiny measurement in some obscure place that has really no bearing on much of anything, to spend an extra five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, or something to have something machined out, you don't want to do that. So that's not doing anybody a service. So anyway, so that's the difference between the two. So if you say you rebuilt something, it had better be to what tolerance? New tolerance. All right. What if you remanufactured? Yeah, somewhere in there it says manufacture in there. So the only person that can do that is the factory. And what does that mean? It means whatever they want it to mean. And let's see here. We use the word talking about terms here, so we'll throw this one out. Tolerance and limits. I use the word tolerance a lot. I have no tolerance left. You have reached I've reached my limits. So tolerance. Tolerance is the plus or minus, plus or minus a part can measure.
So if I said I need a square piece of steel that is one inch across, I said one inch, one inch, plus or minus 0 0.005. That's my tolerance. So my part can measure anywhere from 1.005 <coughs> all the way down to, oh, probably shouldn't have that, uh, 0 0.009, no, that just blew that all the heck. 0.995, correct? If I did the math right? Yeah. So that's my tolerance. It can be anywhere between those dimensions. You follow me? And that's where we get this kind of new minimum, new max in there. Um, Hold on, can you explain that again? Okay. Tolerance is the plus or minus a part can measure. Mm -hmm. So if I said I want a, a block of, of steel that's exactly one inch across, mm -hmm. I don't need to be exactly. It can be plus or minus. That's what I wrote here. Plus or minus 0 0.005. So that means it can be five thousandths bigger or five thousandths less than an inch. Okay. And I'm still going to be happy with it. So not perfect, but damn close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me see. Where are you? Tolerance, oh yeah. Um, it's also considered the limits, or the limit, the limit is the actual size a part can wear to. Size a part can wear to. So for example, we're looking at your crankshaft, and I don't remember the numbers offhand, um, but we can talk about like, uh, it'd be great if I had them memorized here. If I said a something, I have this crankshaft and I say, well, <coughs> new is 1.320 to 1.315. It's a big, big range there. Uh, that's my new limit. New. That means it could be as fat as 1.320 or as small as 1.315 when they made it in the machine shop. As long as it's anywhere in there, they would consider it new limits. Now, in reality, what's going to happen if I bought a brand new crankshaft and it was supposed to be within that, and I measure it, it comes right out of the factory, guess what it's probably going to measure? 1.32. It's going to be very, very close. One that would just right up to it. They're pretty good at doing this stuff. So 1.32. And I'm going to put it into service. I'm going to put it in an engine, and a customer is going to take really good care of this engine, and they're going to run it for 1,000 hours or 2,000 hours. <coughs> Excuse me, and they bring it back and say, ah, it's time for an overhaul. So I overhaul it, I take it apart in a measurement, and I measure it, and this happens to measure 1.316. What, what does that mean? It's still new. Well, how can it be new? It's got 2,000 hours on it. Well, I didn't say it is new, I said it measures within new limits. All right, see the difference? Yeah. And it will. If somebody takes good care of their engine, that's not unreasonable. So I put it together, and they run it for another 1,000 hours and really sell it to somebody. And they don't change the oil very often, but this is serviceable limit. So it can go all the way down to 1.3, uh, I don't know what we should say, 1.305. There we go. And so that's a service limit. So I measure it again. It comes back, and it's 1.310. Um, what does that mean now? All right, I, I can somewhere in here, still serviceable. Can I call it a rebuild? No, no. no because remember, rebuild means new tolerance. So now it's definitely in the overhaul category. Is it bad to do this? Maybe use this crankshaft in an engine? No, it's not bad at all. If it was, the manufacturer wouldn't let you. What they're saying, really, supposedly, is that as long as it's bigger or equal to or bigger than 1.305, this part, because it's going to wear smaller. Somewhere bigger. Um, as long as it's in this, this area, it should run all the way till its projected uh, time of operation. We call it TBO, what it's meant to do. So owner takes it out, flies it another <coughs> 2,000 hours. They bring it back to me, and I measure it's 1.300. Now what? Out of limits. So can I use it? No. Just use thicker oil, right? <laughs> nope, can't use it. So. That's what we got. Uh, then I have clearance. Clearance is the dimension, the dimension between a part, or between parts. 
So perhaps I have some sort of solid shaft that has to ride around in some sort of bearing. The clearance is the difference between that. I should have made it bigger. I'm sorry. It's hard to make it. Okay. So I have this solid part, and it's going around in a, it's a concentric, by the way. Let's use your imagination. Um, going around in some sort of bearing. The difference between these two, that space, is the clearance. And so how do you suppose I'm going to figure out that clearance? That's it. So I'm going to measure the shaft, the black part. I'm going to measure it like your guys have just measured the crankshaft. Then I'm going to take something and I'm going to measure the opening of the, the red part and subtract the two, subtract one from the other, and the difference is the clearance. You guys seem really excited about that. Uh-oh. Everybody get all that? Because I'm going to erase this. I'm out of room. No, go ahead, go back. All right, uh, last little point here on this section would be return to service. Just so you know what we're talking about when I talk about it. So performing something, performing. Performing maintenance or alterations. CE, maintenance or alterations, is not the same, not the same as returning to service. Uh, yes. Okay. So return to service is my, my turn here. That's okay. I sh it should be fine. Uh, no, it's just, I don't know, it's return to service. So that's five, so it's, I guess, not under a term, but it sort of is a term. Sometimes Microsoft Word doesn't like me to uh, do this when I add something later on. All right, so if I ask you, you're the AP in my shop, I say, hey, I need you to change oil in that aircraft. And so you run out and change oil in the aircraft. Come back. I'm done. I perform the maintenance. Well, is it return to service? Yes. Good to go. Is it good to go? No. What do we have to do? <coughs> Okay, we're signing off. So return to service is when the aircraft is when the aircraft or component. What do I mean by component? Sometimes out there in the, in the field, you don't get the whole aircraft. You just get part of an aircraft. Any part could be a wing be an aileron, could be an engine part, could be a landing gear, any part of the aircraft, and you're asked to do maintenance on that part. So somebody brings you a, a wheel, and they say, well, I want you to take this wheel, and I want you to disassemble, clean, inspect, repair, check it for cracks, put a tire on it, balance it, give it back to me. What is that? It kind of is an overhaul, but it's also... Why is it not an overhaul? I didn't test it. I didn't test wheel and tire. I don't know, book didn't tell you. So, okay. So, just be careful of that. So, anyway, so you do all that. Can you return it to service? Huh? You need to inspect it? Well, you have to sign it off. If you're an A&P, you can sign it off. Sure, if you're an A&P, you can do it. You got the book, as long as you got the book. You say, well, what is this wheel off of? It's off a, off a Cessna 210. All right. You got a Cessna 210 manual? Yep, here we go. It says... Servicing, aircraft, wheels, tires. This is what you need to do the, t the wheel. You follow it all through, balance, everything's done, did it. You sign a little tag on there. says, hey, this wheel has been disassembled, clean, inspected, repaired, new, new tube, new uh, tire installed, balanced in accordance with Cessna 210 manual, paragraph such and such, chapter this and that. Yeah. So when you're signing the paperwork or whatever, mm -hmm. so does that paperwork go with the paperwork for that plane? Yes. Okay, so I kind of made it a little difficult because I wanted to make a point about uh, component. And it's like, well, how can a component? Normally, you have the whole aircraft, and you have the aircraft logbooks. Okay. Or in my case, when I overhauled an engine, I didn't have the aircraft, nor did I have the aircraft logbooks, but I did have the engine logbook. 
or I would write out something, we do a lot, uh, especially computers now, is write out something on a sticky note, write out the whole thing on a sticky note, sign it and hand it to the owner operator. And here's your log entry. It's up to them to put it in the log book. You don't have to do it. No, not a sticky note. Like, not a sticky note. Not, no, like not, a double-sided paper that's got the peel off. If you, you know, and, they, and they put it in the... If you take book. your stuff to a mechanic that uses sticky notes for that's that long, that's... Don't. No. Never. Run. It's a giant sheet that has backing on it, like she said. Yes. So, All right. Um, let me see. Uh, let's see. Main is, where am I here? Return to service, not... Or component... Um, return to service is when, yeah, so I said the aircraft is signed off. So what do we need to do to sign something off? Well, must have a log entry. Must have a log entry. So you sent to something in the log book. Um, like I said, that can be, it can actually be done on um, the paper, tag, stuff like that. There's, there's more to it than that. But, but you have a log entry. It says that the work was done correctly. Um, well, you have to make sure work was done correctly, and sometimes you have to, oops, this should be two, whatever, three, um, yeah, this is getting too deep here, anyway, I wrote it, so, flight, sometimes you have to update the flight manual, so there's, there's sometimes more to it, but the big thing, and I'll leave it with this, <coughs> signature, <coughs> signature uh, constitutes approval for return to service. You're going to get a lot more on log entries, but I just want you to know, signature constitutes approval for return to service. So if I do something and I sign it, it is returning to service. I don't know. I don't write this aircraft is now returned to service. I write a description, write the work performed or a reference to what I did. So I could just say um, overhauled the wheel in accordance with the uh, Cessna manual paragraph this that. I don't have to do a whole bunch of stuff. It says overhaul and that's what it is. So I can just write that. You already know how many things I need on there. I write my name or sign my name, a &P number, return to service. It's good to go, right? Yeah, yes? So say there was a Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> Nothing else goes in the logbook. Does it always go in the logbook? No. Made, made a pretty decent living. So did she. Looking up ADs. You did on helicopters, which is even worse. So when they really want to mess with an AMP, they give them the helicopter ADs. They, they don't get any more complicated, and that's what she did. But yes, it, it can... Yeah, I would spend sometimes up to eight hours on even small planes researching ADs that should have been done that were never done. But yes, yeah, and when you do ADs, well, the FAA is getting very specific about how you do it. You are supposed to write complied with AD 9406, one of the 2020, uh, revision number this, dated this. AD complied with at this time, hours next due on. Mm -hmm. Compliance, uh, Method B, subparagraph D, I and mean, you have to lay every single thing or they come knocking at your door. Why didn't you do this right? So, All right, tell you what, let's uh, take a break here.